My first ever electric car was a Vauxhall Ampera, also known as a Chevrolet Volt. I still have one of those. And now we have the Vauxhall Mocha E. Now I've just got a very short time with this car. This is a quick test drive really, but it made sense to get the camera out and just film a short review of what I think of this car with the time I got. So let me show you around it. So for our USA viewers, Vauxhall was part of the General Motors group, which was bought by the PSA group that owned Peugeot, Citroen. So there's a whole collaboration thing going on there. Now, excuse the roadworks if you can hear that, but I've had the Peugeot E208 before and I really like that. And this actually shares quite a few underpinnings with that, but it's in a very different package, really. This is a compact SUV, so kind of a city SUV, they call it. And it has a bit of extra ground clearance here and it can certainly go over speed bumps and curbs, no problem at all. We'll show you the space inside in a moment. But there's a range that starts from £30,000 going up to about £34,000 for a kind of a fully spec launch edition car. And by fully spec, I mean, it is pretty good. I'll show you inside in a moment, but including things like massage seats um, amongst that specification. So very reasonable. The basic cars start from just over £30,000 at the moment. This one in its fetching green, well, I think it looks quite good. Suits it, it's a bit of fun, isn't it? So I think the front looks a bit like the visor from a Lego man. Don't you agree? Is there a front space? Nope, nothing in there. A bit like the ID4, no storage. Probably could have put like a little bit of tray lining to just put a cable in there would have been useful, but there isn't any front space storage. Let's start off looking at the front. I think it looks really different. I like it. It does kind of remind me of a Lego man with the sun, the sort of sun visor on his helmet, this front bit, but um, I like the look, it's different. I don't suppose it's especially aerodynamic, but we do have LED lights on the front, sensors for radar crews and parking sensors all around, certainly on this top of the range model. So this compact SUV style means it has a bit of extra ground clearance. I think it's ideal for speed bumps, but if you did run over a person, as long as they lay flat, you'll clear them easily. So have a look at the boot space. The boot release isn't here, it's under here. And inside, um, yeah, it's a pretty good, reasonable size, comparable to a sort of VW Polo, VW Golf type car. Parcel shelf does come out, seats do fold down, and you'd get a few shopping bags in there. We'd probably even fit our mark in there. Getting comfortable in the front's fine, space is good. It does feel kind of enclosed with a smaller windscreen, but it's perfectly comfortable. This top of the range version even has perforated seats and massage seats, which basically just keeps adjusting the lumbar support at the back. I think that's only available on the launch edition cars, but nice and comfortable in the front, but this shares underpinnings with the Peugeot E208. If you have a look at our video on the E208, there was no space behind me at all. Let's have a look how this compares. Well, I'm in, unlike the Peugeot E208, and it wasn't the E208, the E208, it does have more space. I've just about got enough room to sit behind myself. I do need to put the headrest right up so I can get my shoulders back. I feel quite enclosed here, but it's what you'd expect. It's a fairly small car and I can get in the back. I think you'd be quite cosy with three people, maybe three kids back from school would be fine. Um, not necessarily for a long journey, but actually headroom's really good. It just feels slightly enclosed here, but can't blame it. It's pretty good. Inside, it's all very nice, quite functional. There's some nice trim. So this model here has sort of suede Alcantara sections here and then a kind of carbon fiber effect and different texture on top of the dashboard so it's not shiny it's all quite functional it's all quite nice there's quite a lot of the black shiny plastic which you can see here is already quite dusty and fingerprinty i don't know why manufacturers tend to put that here but this one especially the launch edition model which isn't that much more than the base model um, certainly not by list price, is really well loaded. Heated steering wheel, heated seats, massage seats. I've got all the safety systems, adaptive cruise control, lane assist, self parking, climate control, and then navigation and app connectivity for Android Auto and CarPlay. So certainly well specified. And it's a nice place to be. It does have that kind of compact feel, but with a little bit of height, I think it means you have a good view around you, a good view of the road. Without a glass roof, it does feel a little bit dark there. And the windscreen is kind of more like an old fashioned car where it's quite small and vertical compared to a lot of cars now where the dash drops away. Um, so I guess the front feels a bit more letterbox like with this quite high up, but it's not bad, it feels nice functional practical and especially in the top of the range model with his perforated seats and his door trimmings it's a nice place to be it does have isofix in the front seat as well as two in the back there's a passenger airbag deactivation switch in the glove box which looks like that and there's a switch and there's a small glove box
mobile phone charging here, cup holders here, and some small storage in here. So firstly, what's it like around town? Well, it's pretty good. It, it's got that kind of elevated seating position so I can see around me. Um, it does feel a little bit enclosed, like it feels like quite a small windscreen, the dash is quite high, so there is kind of this enclosed feeling. But what's good, I think, and people would really appreciate is because the bonnet goes out flat from here, I can see the bonnet. I, I feel like I could see the corners of the car really well and position it through gaps quite easily. It's um, got quite an absorbent suspension. It, like a lot of modern cars are quite firm but this has got quite a nice balance i think it's probably about where it should be where you can kind of feel what's happening but it's not too intrusive on the cabin it can zip around in traffic okay and it's not bad at all visibility at the back's okay i'd say the main thing is just inside it just feels a little bit kind of dark and enclosed there's no kind of glass roof option here but as a city car I'm bumping over speed bumps and curbs that bit of ground clearance I don't think it would be any issue so it does a pretty good job I think it will uh, suit what a lot of people want it for which is kind of SUV style but nipping around town on the country road it's alright it, um, it does a reasonable job it does what you'd expect it to do it's absorbing the bumps well enough it doesn't have a vast amount of feel through the steering so it's not a hot hatch but it's not pretending to be a hot hatch it's can be placed well enough the steering just has that kind of little bit of vagueness which you'd like to just have a bit more feel and direction to it but it does it it does a fine job it goes around the corners because of the shorter wheelbase over, over some sort of bumps you can feel that short wheelbase kind of pitches the car a little bit but it's a small car i can't help that it does a reasonable job if you kind of accelerate hard coming out of a corner it can sort of scrabble for grip a little bit but you know this isn't a hot hatch it's not pretending to be it will do the job just fine for what anyone wants it to be like on the motorway it's not bad at all it has a wind whistle which is a little bit irritating a windscreen or wing mirrors it's just just whistling a little bit when the time we got to kind of 70 miles an hour but it would do the job quite nicely i think given its shape and its I don't think it's trying to be particularly aerodynamic, it's got that square front. So I would suspect on a motorway that would have an impact on the range. You can hear it fighting the wind, literally with the wind whistle. So although it is quite comfortable and quite quiet on a motorway, perfectly capable of it, <clears throat> I think you can hear how it's not so aerodynamic as some other cars. And I'd expect that to affect the range significantly. Um, yeah, I think it just would, but it does the job. You, do have adaptive crews available and all but the basic model um, so it would happily do the journeys it's just a shame they can't quite give it that little bit of wind whistle but maybe that's just this one particular car otherwise does a good job of it all what's it like for parking and maneuvering well let's switch this into reverse here got a reversing camera and then it's creating sort of digital image of a 360 surround but it only does that once you've gone backwards it's kind of memorizing the image uh, I've got reasonable size wing mirrors and I think if I just tip that one down there I can see the curb quite well. It's got parking sensors on this one of course. The steering then is very light, no problem. And I think you could position it into a space quite easily. I think it's about where you'd expect it to be really. It, um, the mirrors give you a reasonable view and, and that square bonnet means I can see the front really clearly and then the reversing camera means I can see the back. The steering's very light, nice and easy. No problem. Let's try the self-parking. So you press P, uh, it's looking for gaps by the look of it. You select what kind of maneuver you want to do, then it's scanning for gaps. Ah, so it says, right, there's a gap there. This gap's massive, so it should be able to do it. I put it in reverse. Is it going to steer itself? Have I done it wrong? No, that hasn't done it. <laughs> Let's have a go. Right, press P. Parallel parking, right, that's what I want to do. Parking that gap there. Stop. There's a car coming, so I need to cancel this. So I want to say, power now. Move handsome wheel, turn on the indicator. Maneuver in progress. Uh, is it going to park this on its own? Right. So you stop, you indicate to say you're going to go in there, then you put it in reverse. Now it's doing all of it at the moment, and it's going to... Whoa! 
<laughs> I don't trust that was going to hit the curb then. Was that going to hit the curb, do you think? So I've hit brake. Okay, so I hit brake to override it, but then I could lift off the brake and it carried on doing a maneuver, and I think it's done okay. Let's try it again. Let's just make sure that. Oh, put it into drive, and then it straightens up. Right, okay. So you have to do reverse drive. So what it did was put it into, carried on reverse, and then touched the front wheel. That's done the job. We're in the gap, put it into park, and off we go. There we go, a really quick run through with the Mocha. I really like it. I think it's, again, another option out there that will suit some people. It is compact enough for the city. It has the SUV kind of style and upright position that people like without being too big, enormous and inefficient. Real world range, well, I've not had a chance to really drive this extensively, but I have had the Peugeot E208, which does share the same underpinnings. I think with this shape, it's probably a little bit less efficient. So I'm going to say real world range on this at about 150, maybe 160 miles. I think the motorway driving will impact it because of the slightly more upright position and square front but I think that kind of mileage real world it recharges at 100 kilowatts which is pretty good so you could happily take it on a long journey recharge it fairly fast it's certainly comfortable enough and it just makes for a good compact SUV family car um, yeah not bad well done Vauxhall I quite like it